Ladies and gentlemen, live from the historic Bourbon View venue in the heart of the French Quarter in New Orleans, Marco is pleased to present a distinguished five surgeon panel to discuss the most current applications of integrated wavefront diagnostics. Your moderator for this evening's recorded event, Dr. Larry Patterson from Crossville, Tennessee. There's a whole new uh, classification, a new family, a new category of implants. Uh, it's a, a categorized uh, EDOF, extended depth of focus, and, and the one we know is the symphony. It comes both in the aspheric symphony uh, and also the symphony toric. Have you used this? How have they performed? Uh, and when you're thinking about that lens, is there anything you need to keep in mind, particularly as far as this technology goes? I find that there is less halo issues and less glare with these EDOF lenses than their predecessor multifocal IOLs. So my go-to now is more the EDOF, the Symphony and the Symphony to work. But also because they are more forgiving. In the past, multifocal implants, I used to exclude a lot of patients. Those who had any type of corneal pathology or posterior pole pathology, I would say you are not a candidate because of X, Y, and Z. The EDOF lens is being more um, kind of forgiving. I am now able to include a segment of my patient base that I never used to be able to. For example, somebody who has a few macular drusen with no strong family history of AMD, or somebody who has peripheral corneal pathology, a little bit of anterior basement membrane dystrophy, I'm now saying, yes, you are a candidate. You can get this lens and see far and intermediate and a little bit of reading. However, I still look at the higher order aberration map on my OPD3. Because if that cornea is not really healthy, if it has a lot of higher order aberration, they may still not be a good candidate for the EDOF lens. And again, I use that map, I demonstrate it to the patient, and say yes or no as a candidate. Mitch, have you used the lens? Yeah, it's, it's my actually main premium lens now. Um, so having the OPD3 also lets me know if I have to correct astigmatism. Um, looking at angle alpha, angle kappa lets me know, uh, am I in that, that kind of zone where it's safe to use that technology, even though it's much more forgiving than the original multifocals. And lastly, I love looking at the Placido uh, disc uh, Myers because that shows me if the ocular surface is healthy. So it lets me, because those patients, if you have a poor ocular surface, um, are not going to have a great outcome. And so it lets me know ahead of time if I should be treating those patients. Because we bring patients, we do what Toby does. We get the measurements early on. I can give in recommendation what lens implant or technology I want. And then we'll bring them back for what we call our scheduling visit. It gives me time to repeat testing if needed and treat their ocular surface disease during that time period. They're originally in the FDA trials with the Symphony and have implanted quite a few. And even though it's a more forgiving technology, we have to remember that it's reverse engineering the cornea. So it's more forgiving if you have regular astigmatism, but irregular, it's not going to do better with. If you have a little bit of macular pathology, it's a little bit more forgiving. But if you have any type of corneal edema, uh, which will show up a lot of times on your placido maps like you were talking about. These are the patients that are going to be the surprise to you because you're thinking, well, there's not that much going on there. Maybe they're a little bit dry. This lens is supposed to be more um, forgiving. Actually, those are the patients that are going to give you the nightmares because it's going to push you the other direction. That lens now is not able to correct for that type of cornea. Those are the ones that will have the brilliances and the halos. So the OPD really allows you to stay out of trouble and I think that's one of the best aspects of it is it's not only helping you find the right patients for some of the premium lenses but it also keeps you from putting the wrong lenses in the wrong patients. You have experience with the symphony? I do and, and it is also my go-to lens and I've had excellent experience with it although there are those cases and, and that, that I miss the opportunity to avoid um, and, and, and you know that's the case with any kind of multifocal lens or extended depth of focus, that there will be patients who will not necessarily be the best candidate, and you're not going to necessarily be able to predict that ahead of time. Although this advanced imaging technology will hopefully lessen the number of patients who will be less happy with these technology of one lenses. Other, one other comment I would mention is, is uh, when we're looking at the, the true multifocal lenses, the stronger their ad, 
uh, the tighter your tolerance has to be for angle alpha and al angle kappa. And, and as you get lower power, you get a little bit more leeway. With the symphony, you get even more. So yeah. we actually put our epic machines uh, in a room that, that is next to the hallway, and we actually put somewhat darkened glass so people can still see the technology as they go by, because we were, we were really impressed with it. So. 2017 brings the 50th birthday to Mark Ophthalmic. The last 50 years have been an all-American dream come true. Thank you for being a part of our dream.